about this is the father of Joaquin Oliver. His son was one of the 17 students and staff shot and killed at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida back in 2018. Uh, just a, a terrible event that we'll, uh, we'll never forget. Uh, and in his son's honor, he and his wife made it to their uh, made it their mission to end gun violence through the organization uh, Change the Ref. Uh, and Manuel Oliver, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. It's an honor to talk to you. Uh, I'm so sorry, again, we have to talk under these circumstances. Uh, you've been very generous with your time on, on CNN uh, talking with us about this issue. When you heard the news on Wednesday that there was another mass shooting in America, what went through your mind? Oh, thank you for having me here, Jim. Um, I just heard from another mass shooting five minutes ago, and mm. and, and and it was about 20 minutes away from home. It's in Wynwood. Uh, one person is dead, another six are injured. So if you ask me about what I felt on Wednesday, it's something that I feel every single day. Um, not, not to mention what I felt three years ago when I lost my son, which is exactly what some families are feeling right now while you're asking me that question. It's a terrible situation. It's a terrible feeling. And there have been at least 16 mass shootings uh, here in the U.S. since last week, 234 this year. That's a 40 percent increase from 2019. Uh, it does seem like things are just getting worse and nothing's being done about it. Not only nothing has been done about it. Well, I mean, it was pretty predictable when, when we were the only nation that during COVID decided to call guns an, an essential. Like, now we have more guns out there than before COVID, and now we have more people going through crisis and financial problems and no jobs. So, so this is a lethal combination that our system is allowed and, it, and it's endorsing in a way. Uh, the easy access to guns is, is just making no sense for anyone, but from some legislators and of course, the gun industry and the NRA. And what do you think it's going to do, uh, you know, uh, in, in terms of the debate here in Washington? Um, we see these mass shootings uh, here in the U.S. Uh, they, they seem to have little or no effect on uh, the dialogue here in Washington, the political dialogue here in Washington. What's it going to take to change things at the national level, do you think? Well, um, I don't think uh, things will change soon. You see this debate going on. I'm afraid that... Um, maybe if they lose their kids from a, from a shooting, maybe they will change their mind. Um, I do know that there is a lot happening outside of Capitol Hill. People like Patricia, my wife, like myself, like my daughter, like the kids from March for Our Lives, we're doing a lot. Um, we, I, I spoke to President Biden before he was elected president. He promised me that we will work together. We were gonna fix this. We were gonna fight the NRA and the gun industry. And I'm ready for that. I am ready for that. Do we get together in my house or do we get together in the White House? Uh, we are telling the story the way it's supposed to be told. We are creating campaigns and we haven't stopped since I lost my son. But guess what? Since the day I lost my son, more than 120,000 people have lost their lives because of gun violence. Who is actually putting attention into this? I'm not so concerned about the shootings that already happened. I'm more concerned about the shooting that is gonna to happen tomorrow and we cannot prevent it because we're afraid or because our hands are tied. There's too much money inside Capitol Hill. There's too much intervention from the NRA inside Capitol Hill, but we can fight that back outside. The people will decide, not them. And what laws uh, or actions do you think would immediately curb gun violence now if we could just get if you could just get one thing done what would that be well pay attention to the president come on mr biden told you give me answers about ghost guns and, and red flag laws 30 days on one 60 days on the other and these members of congress and senate after they ask us for help to get them elected now they're wasting time debating from one side to the other it's unbelievable. People are dying here. So the answer is- Sounds like you want to see action and you're not seeing it, enough action. Sounds like you're, no, you're unhappy. I, I am very unhappy, not only because I lost my son. I have friends that lose loved ones every single day. Of course I'm not happy and you shouldn't be happy and no one is happy with what's going on because it's a genocide. 
We are fighting an inside war, and we are our own enemy. Americans are killing each other, and the administration, any administration, decades ago, have been approving that war. So, of course, I'm not happy. We're going to fight it back. We're going to give them the same treatment that was given to the tobacco industry 20 or 25 years ago. This is about telling the story, telling the truth the right way with, with the right courage. Nothing's going to stop me from doing that because I'm not asking for votes. I won't be elected for anything else than being a victim's dad. Manuel, it means so much that you came on to talk with us this afternoon. I think having you on, other families who have been through something like this is part of the process of getting this country, getting the leaders of this country to pay attention to this issue. Uh, and, and we are honored uh, that you came on this afternoon, and thank you so much. Uh, our hearts are with you and your family as you're still uh, grappling with this, struggling with this, because you're right, when these mass shootings happen, it affects you, it hurts your heart every single time. Uh, Manuel, great talking to you. Thanks so much. We'll have you on again real soon. Thank you, Jim. Have a great day. All right.